Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning across the world. So uh, this is Dr. Bhaskar Bora, and today we are going to speak to Dr. Mary Borwa, who is a, a associate professor in Cotton University in Guwahati, Assam. And more importantly, she is a very good friend of mine and an educationalist in Assam. And she's also a poet and an author. And I have been uh, privileged to co-author a book, an anthology of poems with her. So we're going to talk today a little bit about her journey as to how she became uh, a professor and a poet and a writer and a superwoman. And also uh, going to talk a little bit about life in general and uh, creative writing a few things which will which we will continue in the next part of this series this is just the part one uh so thank you mary for your time uh for joining this conversation so i'd like to start off by asking you to give a brief introduction about yourself please how should i introduce myself i am a I'm a teacher by profession. I am a mother to two children and uh, yeah, and I have a family. I am a daughter. I have uh, other responsibilities as a social being. Uh, that is it. Nothing much. So that itself is quite a lot, isn't it? For one person to have so many roles and to be able to do all these roles, uh, so well so that in itself is is a great achievement i feel so tell us a bit more about your career your teaching career or your career as a student how you progress towards this okay so i thought i was destined to become a teacher if not at a university maybe at a play school because i never imagined doing anything else besides becoming a teacher. Somewhere I had to be teaching. Uh, so it's like that. And it happened that I uh, could uh, clear certain exams, whatever was required for me to be a part of the higher education system. And uh, that is how it went on. And... Uh, it has been now 20 years almost that I am a part of uh, Cotton University now, which was earlier known as Cotton College. Uh, it is a, a, a an institution which is more than 100 years old. And uh, I had been a student there. I am a faculty there. So it I feel it is a grace of God that I'm been able to be a part of my alma mater now. And uh, that is how it is. And in my free time, I actually loved reading a lot. But nowadays, I don't get time to read. That might be an excuse. But uh, uh, yeah, I wish I could have more time to myself. As uh, career seems to be growing, growing in the sense because uh, it's almost 20 years now. So there are other responsibilities besides teaching that uh, all of us need to look into. And uh, because of that, uh, at times, the other things which I had loved doing uh, took a back seat. Uh, yeah, and I'm waiting for my retirement so that I can again retrieve all of that and get back to my original form. Yeah, not physically, of course. <laughs> Now, I'm sure that will that will happen with time. You're looking for retirement. I'm already retired, so I'm one step ahead. So uh, I know you are a very, very modest person and uh, knowing you over the years. But I think the world also needs to know your, your struggles and your challenges of completing PhD from an esteemed student, uh, esteemed organization uh, when, you, when you had a baby to look after. Mm -hmm. as well as your family and everything. So I think that in all 
is a very inspirational story and that is, uh, i suppose yeah i'll interrupt that is because uh, women for women uh, you know early career stage uh, somehow is uh, it it coincides with their early married life and having a baby and their career three things come together more often to women absolutely and i suppose uh, women across the world would uh, be you know juggling amongst all of these and uh, they 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 are constantly under pressure to perform well in all of these uh, which itself is a big challenge and uh, because they choose to take a career they are somehow because traditionally conventionally trained to be a mother or a wife uh, 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 their uh, ideas and their minds and their thought processes are disciplined into thinking that it is the primary thing of their life so career becomes a secondary issue and at workplace she needs to perform and then if it if if somebody is into academics then a phd is a must in the higher education system so all of these were uh, challenging uh, uh, for me but i believe it is actually challenging for women uh, across the world who are in such situations and uh, you need a very good family support system uh, you need a very uh, congenial work environment uh i suppose i was lucky that way because i joined my alma mater and uh, i found the, uh, most of the colleagues uh, who were in the department were my teachers uh, who had provided me with all uh, you know facilitated uh, the process of my you know taking uh, my phd work forward at home i had my parents to look after my children and that way uh, things went on and uh, yeah there were moments of uh, i suppose it is depression perhaps it was depression but uh, thankfully i could overcome that and yeah i feel that i have matured more now things that would have worried me then uh, no longer makes me anxious now so that way it is uh, experience has uh, trained me rather maybe to see life in a more uh, sort of uh, good uh, congenial manner uh, earlier i thought it was very difficult now i thought think that uh, one can actually find some way to deal with uh, challenges that life throws at one absolutely very wise words and i think men are generally probably a bit more privileged that they don't have to uh maybe juggle as much although i mean we should not be generalizing anything because all individual stories are different but mm -hmm. by definition as you said women have to uh, because they are expected to raise a family get married at a certain age especially in our indian society and and you still want to fulfill your ambitions so juggling all this is is a huge thing and so before going further i just wanted to ask what would be your advice to women who are going through the stage that you went through 15 years ago or 20 years ago what would you suggest to them actually my advice wouldn't mean a lot because uh, everyone's uh, individual context would be very different uh, personal from general principles i mean how could they optimize yeah that can be done like uh, one has to sort of you know uh, to strike a balance it is very very difficult uh, there would be times where you might uh, end up being a very uh, sort of uh, aggressive person because you have your priorities you need to complete an assignment at the same time you have to also get ready for your festivities that are you know ensuing so who what do you choose and you know you know you would end up becoming very bitter person that way so these things you need to like prioritize how do you sort of uh, uh, kind of uh, you know resolve things uh, for women it becomes important that you think about what is important for you what at the end of the day what matters most to you uh, there might be times where one might need to give up things which 
for other women might seem very important for me it, it may not be important so personalized you know you have some sort of uh, uh, personal uh, perspective on individual perspective on uh, resolving your crisis on facing problems but what one can do is to not get uh, uh, sort of uh, too anxious and too troubled by the problems that come along because uh, life cannot be always you know a, a bed of roses that we had done earlier in our school days we used to write uh, amplifications life is not a bed of roses yeah it is not a bed of roses so you need to keep that in mind so maybe uh, if if there is a colleague of mine who had uh, attained uh, um, uh, say a PhD in three years because she could devote a lot of time uh, it's okay if I do it in six years because nevertheless I end up doing that because there were other things which are important to me so I had to you know sort of balance all of that uh, it cannot be a competition with the other person actually it is competition with one's own self how you uh, go through the crisis Competing with others would make one very unhappy that way. And uh, that is what uh, makes people very stressed. It makes people anxious. So uh, personally, I take one day at one time. And this I have been doing more often now. That today, whatever I had, I need to complete. If I had 10 work in the early morning, if I know that I had to accomplish 10 tasks, at the end of the day, I know that I have done five out of 10. Good. Tomorrow, I'll again follow it up. Instead of, you know, uh, becoming very bitter that I couldn't do, I couldn't complete my list. Because other, the you know, the other time had been taken up maybe by my daughter or my son or something else, maybe cooking something that made the other people happy. So it's okay. At times things uh, do not work according to our plan but then one must have that uh, ability to accept that acceptance is very important uh, i personally i don't have any competition with anybody uh, and and uh, maybe that way it helps me because uh, i'm not affected by what is happening outside in the market what is in trend what is in fashion uh, and uh, that is how I carry on. I do my work and I feel that if I have given 100% to whatever I am doing, uh, that makes me happy. It's fine. Some some days might be uh, dark, gloomy. Some days it's happy. That is how it is. I think just within a very few lines, you have, you have given a full management lesson. I think you covered almost mm -hmm. the entire it's syllabus really of personal management. You know, you mentioned about acceptance. You mentioned about prioritization. You mentioned about competing with yourself to be a better person than what you were yesterday, than being competing with someone else. You also mentioned about the fact that, I mean, sometimes it can happen that we can feel depressed. We can be down. Uh, but the glory is not in never falling, but the glory is in actually falling and rising up again. Rising, yeah, that course. is that is the most important thing. And you yourself have seen the ups and downs and, and you know that those things have now made you a stronger person, more matured mm -hmm. than what you were. So all of these are things that if we can follow in our lives, it can make our life much more blissful. Or at least it will it will make us less troubled. Mm -hmm. You know, it not it, we do not necessarily have to always wear the latest trend uh, trending branded clothes yeah. or, or have the branded accessories to make us the best person mm -hmm. in the society. But what is more important is to have a more trending thought, a more trending mindset. So this is so all these things that you have said, I think, uh, is really inspiration. And I hope whoever watches this video and this interview uh, will understand the deeper meaning behind, behind all these things. So besides everything else that you have been doing, and I know you do uh, more way 
more than uh, uh, way above uh, what you are paid for in the university. I mean, uh, you take a lot of part in, in co-curricular activities and student welfare and all sorts of things. And besides that, you also take part in lot, lots of charity activities as well. But on top of that, you are also a poet, a writer, a translator, and uh, you, you have now recently become involved uh, in this organization called Aspire Academy, which is a social enterprise uh, for teaching uh, underprivileged children. So how are you doing all that and why do you do all that? Uh, uh, I did not have any planned uh, sort of thing. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, there, there is a part in me which, uh, you know, uh, continuously propels me to take up things which I have never done. Uh, like uh, translation happened because uh, a teacher of mine had asked me to, you know, help somebody else with translating certain things. So because my teacher had asked me to do, I agreed. And that is how I entered into translation. Then I thought I could do it for fiction and nonfiction or something like that. And that is how it went on. Uh, sort of, uh, that was it. Uh, then again, if there is an opportunity where I feel that I might be of some help, uh, I would uh, like to help. Uh, I guess there are many people who do that. Uh, across the world, there are people who are doing. Uh, and uh, because I am in the uh, you know teaching profession for now more than two dec decades now, I had been actually teaching since I did my HSLC. I used to take tuitions also because there were children who would come. And, you know, uh, so after my college, that would give me pocket money also. And that is how teaching was a part of my existence. Uh, so I thought when the uh, I came to know about Aspire, I thought because it was uh, uh, taking into consideration the fact that underprivileged children need to be taken care of specially, and that uh, it is not an outrightly commercial venture. And maybe because I was a teacher, I thought I could be, you know, productively or in a, you know, I would be able to contribute towards its growth. And that is how I came to be associated. And because it was a part of my, uh, you know, I thought uh, at one point of time, maybe I would need to, uh, get back into those kind of activities. Uh, all the time, people cannot live just by earning money and, you know, satisfying one's own desires and wishes and gaining in material worth and assets. Uh, maybe there it can be a priority for someone else. But personally, I don't feel uh, life is just meant for, you know, uh, the consumption purposes. So that way, I thought I should uh, get, uh, if, if there's a chance, I may start working for it so that by the time I retire, I would have a full-fledged, uh, you know, organization where I can devote my time and, you know, feel at least being a productive component of the society. That is how I thought I should join Aspire and more so because uh, a friend of mine you are a part of it. And there are young teachers who are trying to make their uh, entry foray into the world of teaching. And all of these people, young people who are also a part of this enterprise because they want to help the society in not in, not in terms of material gain, but also providing the society with uh, some sort of, uh, you know, very, very mm -hmm. positive contribution. Uh, that is how we all have ended up becoming a part of Aspire. And I'm really grateful that you have, because it is a dream uh, project. And as you said, it's it's not really just commercial. We just need the commercial aspect for the sustainability. But we hope that this is something we can, we can take forward and make a positive difference to the society. 
and also be a big post retirement venture now we have had the privilege of working together across uh, different time zones and uh, not only did we write and share poems but we also actually went on publishing a book uh, which has been critically acclaimed by many people now people say that in order to become really creative or become an artist or a poet whatever you have to go through pain now pain means different things for different people but i suppose we have gone through different kinds of pain and we have tried our best to put the put them in in words uh words which have come out from the heart rather than from the from the mind so how was this experience of writing poems and coordinating with with someone across virtually and coming out with a book and the whole experience of it yeah uh, we uh, like uh, i started scribbling actually i did not know that poetry would be a part of it uh, there was a friend of mine who used to share his poems and then i thought i could if uh, i change a particular word that would make a different uh, you know it would refine the entire experience so that way when i was doing i'm grateful to him that he suggested that i should also try writing and i laughed it off uh, i said i have never written a single word that way but he insisted that uh, i begin writing and that way i'm grateful to him and then covid came and when covid happened uh i and uh, one of my senior colleagues then my teacher who was working with me in the department both of us thought that we should uh, you know start writing it uh, because we were sharing exchanging he used to exchange uh, his uh, verses and so we did it that way and uh, even now when i write i ask approval from sir so so uh, we uh, sort of uh, decided that we will write one poem a day so at times it happened that it would become three to four poems also a day or it uh, there were days where uh, there would be no poem at all uh, and then we happened to you know connect over whatsapp uh, and then uh, this whole thing because we were very laid back and even now i am a laid back person and sir is also had it not been for you we would have not, never come up with this idea of a book uh, basically i am a very lazy person so uh, that way we ended up writing poems then because you insisted that we get it published uh, so we got into that and eventually it got published yeah and uh, poetry is a very uh, intimate private uh, expression i think and uh, the way things and uh, the way uh, you know experiences of life shapes your cognition of your condition uh, and how do you reflect upon it because when you say pain pain will have different dimensions like how you have understood pain would be very different from my understanding of pain and mm-hmm. it would differ from person to person uh, maybe and uh, i think uh, there were people uh, i i got a very good remark regarding a particular poem i had shared it with my young uh, junior colleagues uh, both women and when i wrote a particular poem with a particular context in mind I, it, it came as a surprise to me that this colleague of mine who had recently then lost her father said that this poem reminded her of her father but the same poem which was again shared with another young person in kerala he said that it was wonderful because it reminded him of something else so you know it is the readers uh, assessment actually that would uh, perhaps lend it more value uh, otherwise uh, whatever comes to my mind uh, maybe i try to put it down in words and that is how it is uh, but the book really happened because you insisted it would have never been a part of i was very pushy yeah <laughs> i was very pushy but i think that led to a good thing something which will which will leave as a legacy even after we pass on 
So I, I think I think so. I have to keep pushing. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think you are you are absolutely things. right. I mean, pain is pain is a perception, uh, mm -hmm. but the suffering is mm -hmm. entirely different for every person. So how much they suffer for that kind of pain uh, can be very very subjective. But I think it is also important that people do have an understanding of pain and sorrow and empathy and those those sort of those sort of emotions to be able to find the real person inside them the real human being otherwise life can be very superficial and uh, as as we know from our own stories i mean once you've gone through certain things then all all Many other things which matter to many people, they all become, uh, I would say, much less important. Mm -hmm. it? So when 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 you realize the the importance of life, when you realize when you, I mean, sometimes I think it is important to be in a bit of darkness to understand the value of light. So it's a yeah, simple exactly. sort of thing, and sometimes by the time we realize. Uh, the value of something it is only after we have lost mm -hmm. so i always say don't come to my grave with with flowers bring to, bring them to me even before if you wish mm -hmm. to so that i can act, i can actually smell their smell their scent yeah. so tell us something about mary borwa that the world doesn't know <laughs> First of all, I don't think the world should know me because there is nothing that, you know, that is so distinctive that, uh, you know, the world should know about me. Uh, no, something interesting. I don't know, like, uh, what can it be? Something interesting about me? Uh, I don't know. My daughter is smiling at me. If your daughter is there so next to you, she might be able to say something interesting about you. My son says that I am a very, you know, I, I am a very finicky person. That is other people's observation. That would give you an idea. I, I am a very, very strict disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. I always go by. Uh, a while ago, my daughter was saying, why do you stick to time so much? Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, it has been a part of my, you know, regimen, if it may be. Like... Uh, I, I think because you are you are doing so many things and there are only certain uh, number of hours in the day, so it is important to make sure that that you are sticking to your time. Otherwise, you'll end up double booking yourself or being late for your meetings and stuff like that, and not being as productive as you can. Uh, I personally uh, no. think that I think you you are you are like a coconut. So oh. maybe that's something people don't know about you. So you are very firm from outside, but very soft from inside, soft-hearted. So that is something I can say as a friend. And I think that that is, yeah. that is, your, that is a great thing. I don't know. like, But uh, I can tell you that I'm very uh, spiritual person that way. Spiritual not in terms of, you know, established religion, but spiritual because I think that uh, if you do some wrong, uh, that the the repercussions will definitely be there, and you know, wrong doesn't mean that you know you are doing wrong in terms of conventions and traditions or something. Whatever at a certain point of time, whatever needs to be done as a human being, if I don't do that, it would be wrong. Uh, that is wrong for me. Wrong isn't like you know you always obey your elders and you don't say anything, you don't uh, question. Uh, those things do not uh, sort of uh, affect me that way. But if I need to question, I, I will question. If I need to argue, I will argue. If I need to resist, I will resist. Uh, if I feel that, okay, uh, at the end of it, this resistance or this argument is not worth certain things that I need to protect, then I will like, give up also. It's uh, some way maybe that is how I survive sort of maybe uh, but uh, I don't easily forget that is also something which is I don't know how 
if I may say that is a positive or negative, uh, I I don't forget very easily. Uh, things. I think that that's, that's a positive because I think forgiving someone is is important because yeah. uh, that's a part of Moving your own healing. Important. But yeah. when people say forgive and forget, I don't believe in that myself. I think you should forgive, but you should not forget because otherwise you'll end up doing the same wrong once again. So that takes us very nicely into as a subject for our next discussion, which would be on on the spirituality in daily life and if, a few other things. So last question is: mm -hmm. We all know hindsight is a great thing. Mm -hmm. So if you have to roll the years back mm -hmm. to any point, you know you want to reset at any but uh, at any point in time. Is there anything you would have done differently? And if so, what? Uh, this is a very, uh, you know, uh, sort of impractical question, I feel. It's because, true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't so the reason I asked you is that maybe somebody who is, mm -hmm. who is going to follow a, a similar journey to yours, what could they prevent? Or uh, what should they do differently? Uh, yeah, they uh, maybe uh, sort of uh, say, uh, you know, because uh, one is at a certain age. Uh, a with age, you acquire your experience and then you, you know, your decisions are affected by your experience. Uh, so the person that I am now, I wasn't, uh, say, when I was, say, 20-year-old or maybe 15-year-old girl. Uh, so th at that point of time, to expect that I would have the wisdom of a 50-year-old woman, uh, that is also very improbable. Uh, but uh, as, as an individual, as a young person, maybe, or, you know, as somebody who is looking forward towards life, one needs to prioritize. With me, it was a different case because, you know, I can compartmentalize. It's a, uh, it's something that I forgot to tell you. In the midst of a lot of chaos, if mm -hmm. I need to work on something, I will be able to work. I, I don't need... That know, is a huge positive, actually. We need to talk more about that in the next... <laughs> I don't know. Somehow, these things happen like when, you know, these uh, these gurus who gave mantras nowadays for, you know, managing oneself and, you know, looking after taking care of yourself and all of that, picking up a hobby or something. Uh, I feel that I have done all of that and that was somehow inbuilt into my system. Like when I go through a lot of pressure, I make pickles, you know. I pick up something, I find out something and I start making pickles. Um, or... Uh, say there is something uh, which is uh, very disturbing, then maybe I'll cook something. So you have an outlet. And by the time your work is done, that whole pressure, it just goes away without much of, you know, damage. And that way I come back to my work again. But maybe I'm really grateful to God that this, you know, I, the fact that I can compartmentalize something that is disturbing at my workplace will not come over to my home. Uh, something that is disturbing me inside my, you know, mind regarding my relationship would not be reflected upon how, how I am behaving with my children. Most of the time, mm -hmm. uh, largely, there is. I think that is issue. that is really, really positive, and that is something for people to learn. And perhaps that is something we can we can help our students uh, with as well as to how to, how to compartmentalize our brain or how to build this resilience, because this is all a part of your life skills as to how to survive yeah. different difficult situations. Maybe my so, profession also helped me because, uh, say I had a, you know, it's a difficult day at home. I have to go to the class and take a class. Now there I cannot have a grumpy face and then, you know, uh, disclose that I had a problem, I couldn't prepare my lessons and, you know, you please excuse me or I show my anger on them. Those children do not have any fault, right? Absolutely. So I had to yeah. be, a, you know, a positive, uh, productive person inside the class. And uh, that way, maybe it is a training, perhaps. I didn't know all of that. Now no, that, that, is, really... that is very true. No, I can completely identify uh, with that thing because 
same with me as a doctor however however upset or tired or or, or negative i feel but the yeah. moment a patient walks across the door to me uh, with an mm-hmm. expectation that they would see the doctor in the best possible you know with the best foot forward mm-hmm. or a, a person smiling and welcoming to them so i couldn't let them down because mm-hmm. at the end of the day i am i am a doctor at that point i may yeah. be a son and a husband and a, a and a father or something else at different points with with my own problems but at that point i had to fulfill that role and and as we have discussed before we are basically all all role players on the stage of this of this world mm-hmm. so i think we are going to conclude uh, this today it's been a very interesting discussion and once again i thank you for your thank time you. and i i really hope that our viewers uh, would have found this very useful very insightful and we will we will be talking about uh, on different topics i would also request for one of the sessions to talk with mo your daughter because i know she has uh, she has got wisdom beyond her age so it will be very nice to, uh, to have a chat with her on on certain topics especially related to children now mm-hmm. uh, if uh, you give consent of course but yes. for today ladies and gentlemen we we have had the privilege to talk to dr mary borua uh, who is an associate professor of cotton university in guwahati assam and uh, my very good friend and co-author and i'm looking forward to see meeting her in london very soon because she'll be coming over and we shall be presenting a paper together at the uh, winchester university and royal college of surgeons so very soon we'll be talking again and uh, hopefully we can share some more wisdom and i look forward to learning from you like i do every time i speak so thank you very much so have a very thank good evening you. yeah thank you bye thank you